So for me personally, because it was the first time that I have been asked to uh, participate in awards like this, I really didn't quite know what to expect from the entries that we were about to see. And I have to say that I'm really happy to see the amount of variety that we got, both in terms of um, approaches, um, genders, nationalities. It was really nice to have such a great overview of what the photography scene in Asia is looking like today. And uh, it really didn't make it easy for us to have to distill it down to you know, a winner and, and even actually even a top 10 finalist. That was a very difficult process. Um, and I, I, I believe that when the results are revealed, um, the peop when, when people look at um, who the finalists are, they in turn will also be able to get a very good understanding of just how far for photography practice has come in Asia over the last few years. Um, I honestly do not believe that we would have had such a response um, 10 years ago. Uh, and so I'm, I'm really, really pleasantly happy and ha a little bit surprised. Um, but maybe that's due to my own preconceptions. Yeah. Well, I think that for me personally, what I look for is really coherence. Uh, I look for coherence in the uh, concept in the way that it was executed, in the way that it's presented, um, and I also look at the originality of the intention that was put forward and how well the photographer has managed to use photography as a means to uh, achieving his, his or her stated intention. I think that's what I look for. Yeah. And of course, um, visual aesthetics play a large role, but I think that personally, I think that it plays a supporting role. Um, so, for example, I think an essay uh, or a project that might be very nice to look at um, without the foundation of a uh, uh, good concept uh, would basically ring quite hollow in the end. Mm -hmm. I think that Asia is currently in this stage of development uh, whereby you still have countries that might not be as well represented uh, but I think that this is a problem that goes away with time. You know, uh, economies develop, there's more people get more, there's more opportunities for education, and then inadvertently that leads to uh, more entries into awards like this. And so, like this year, um, if there, you know, while we, we, we may have seen a corresponding increase in uh, entries from Nepal and Myanmar, I would say I look forward to more increase, uh, uh, an increase in entries from, say, Laos. Um, which is another country that I think we don't really hear a lot from right now. Um, but also, I, I, I do think that sometimes the onus is uh, put back on us that we actually have to go do a bit more searching. So I, I, I think that uh, given time, this will eventually reveal itself. Uh, and we can see that in the last 10 years, actually, uh, as more and more countries increase in participation over time. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I think that... Um, Especially for documentary photography, uh, when I first started out, there was a lot of cliché topics. Um, and the problem with it is that actually, even though it's a cliché, most of the time it's still very important. It's a crucial issue, it should be paid attention to. Um, but then when you have too uh, oversaturation of work from a particular topic, you, you get fatigue. And uh, that is, for me personally, the main problem with the cliché. Not so much that it, it's been done before, but it just uh, prevents people from paying as much attention to it as they should. Um, and I, so this, this year, uh, when I was looking at the entries, I, it made me realise that there were certain clichés that have disappeared over time. And um, I, I, there were uh, some um, entries that I was very pleasantly surprised to see because it made me uh, realize that there were still people working on very, very crucial social issues that have not gone away even though they've been around for a long, long time. And uh, to the photographers who are working on those issues, I just want to say, like, please uh, don't give up and uh, please keep going. Um, and if you feel like your message is not being heard, maybe reach out to people and try and find a way to, to get that uh, message across clearer. You know, but yeah, we, are, we are listening when we are paying attention to it. Yeah. I think having an award like this uh, that focuses specifically on Asia is good. Um, there are a lot of other existing awards out there that are 
catering to you know international uh, crowd or, or regional in but different different regions uh, we don't really have that yet uh, especially in Southeast Asia in, in, in the way that invisible photographer Asia has done uh, and I think that narrowing the focus actually allows us to have more specific conversations about and dialogue about things that are more pertinent to the people here and in, so it's more relevant um, so I, I don't think it's an either or I think that we need both uh, large-scale contests as well as uh, more focused uh, ones like these. It, it brings up uh, issues that might otherwise not actually be addressed if you are having a broad uh, audience. When you look at the finalists, uh, I think what you're going to see is photographers who are trying to push the medium, um, trying to find new ways of uh, getting a message uh, to an audience and uh, experimenting with different formats and I think that's really really uh, important for us to pay attention to because I think in this era of uh, filter bubbles and echo chambers it is really important for uh, photographers to be more flexible in the way that they communicate and so if you you know when you, if you get exposed to uh, more ways of telling the story I think that it increases your chances of finding a, a method that uh, works for what you want to do um, and, and I think we, we really do see a, a amazing variety of um, approaches in the, in the finalist uh, work yeah